Well, today we're starting the very first of our 40 days in the Word small group studies. I'm excited about this because all we want to do in this time is to give you the practical tools to help you get the most out of your time in the Word of God. You know, someone said to me once that the Bible was not given to give knowledge, but for life change or to change your life. It wasn't given to inform, but to transform. And when we don't do any more than just get our heads uh, notified about what is true and right and real, then we really haven't met the goal, have we? Someone also asked me the question, hey, what's the best translation of the Bible? Well, the best translation is to translate the Bible into our lives. I had a mentor that once said, you know, the goal is not to get through the book, but to get the book through you. And I agree. It's not to give us bigger heads, but bigger hearts. Amen. I love James 1 and 22. The brother of the Lord wrote these words, said, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You see, if we do it right, belief turns into behavior. So I want to show you six ways that we can meditate on scripture. Um, and, you know, why is it that living the Bible, not just knowing the Bible, is so important to us? Well, 2 Timothy puts a pretty good stab at that. It says 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Again, when you know verses, sometimes we run the risk of missing the meaning. Don't do that. Listen carefully. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Now, teaching is about information that we get. Reproof is about pointing out the wrong. Correction is about fixing the wrong and correcting it and making it right. And training is all about repetition. But get the why. Here's the why. That the man of God or the woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So why do we need the Word of God? So that we may be complete and equipped for every good work that the Father would have us. So, some basic principles of Bible study to kind of set the stage for this. Number one is to just simply ask the right questions. Ask the right questions. Ask who, what, when, where, why, and my favorite question, so what? What's this got to do with me? Ask the questions like, you know, what in the world is this even doing in the Bible? Why is this here? What's going on here? Hey, and what's what does this have to do with me? How does this relate to me? What's the one-time truth? What's the all-time truth? Hey, and what's the truth that I need for today? How can I put this into practice? So ask the right questions. Then the second part is so key, and I want to encourage you to do that during these 40 days in the Word, and that is to write down your observations. Dawson Trotman said these words. Dawson Trotman was the, the originator uh, the first person who led the group we know as navigators. And he said these words, thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through the lips and the fingertips. Don't miss that. Thoughts disentangle. We get clarity around what God is saying when they come through, when we say it, but also when we write it. I journal almost every day, not because I think I'm a great writer, but because I want to learn what God is saying. And I want to be able to articulate that back and say, God, this is what I hear you saying. And sometimes when I go back and read those, I just kind of go, wow, I had no idea, Lord, that you were speaking that to me five years ago or 10 years ago or even 40 years ago or even last week. If I can't say it or write it, the chances are I probably haven't learned anything yet. Now that's kind of stings, but it's true. So I would just encourage you to start keeping some kind of spiritual notebook, a journal or a binder, or just take a, a simple uh, notepad, a legal pad. I've just got a small one here, and, and begin to write those things down. I use an app on my phone called Evernote. Whatever works for you. Or you can just do notes on your phone. Yeah, that's a free app that's there. Uh, but just begin to keep a spiritual notebook. And if it's no more than just observations that you have and applications that you're obtaining. So ask the right questions, write down your observations. Now, don't just interpret it. It's not enough just to understand it. We must begin to apply it to our lives. The goal of Bible Bible study is application. What does it have to do with me? How should I be changed by this? Interpretation without application is like abortion. 
You stop the process before it comes to full fruition. You're stopping short. You're, you're shortchanging the process of reading and studying the Bible. If I don't ask the so what question, what does this have to do with me? How can I make this part of my life? How can I live this word? Hey, and it's true, isn't it? I only believe the parts of the Bible that I actually do. I might believe in tithing, but if I never tithe, then I probably don't believe in it. I might believe in forgiveness, that I need to forgive you, but if I never forgive you, then I must not believe that. See what I'm saying? The problem is not interpreting the difficult passages. <laughs> no, for me, it's obeying the passages that I already understand, putting it into practice. Next, study it systematically. You know, we don't ever read a book by, I think I'll read the last page, and then I go to the 23rd page, maybe the first page, and then I'll read the, the next to the last chapter. No, we read it systematically. We start and we get, if you're reading a novel, you typically start at the beginning and follow it to the end. Now, you might read a newspaper like that, but the Word of God, if I want to understand what God has to say, then I'm going to have to read it systematically, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, or maybe theme by theme, or, or you're doing a character study, read character by some, but that, all those ways are systems where you're reading it methodically. And then, you know what? Read it over and over and over again. I've made it a practice of reading the Bible through almost every year since I gave my life to Jesus, and that was 40 plus years ago. Um, have I read the Bible 40 times plus? Probably. I'm not keeping a tally on that, but hopefully more than that. But here's what I know. I'm a slow learner, and it's going to take all my life to become all that God wants me to be. Now, the word meditate. I told you these are meditational methods. I just want you to put your, your mind around that. Meditation is essentially thought digestion. You're digesting the thoughts there. To meditate is the same to ruminate or to chew. It's like a cow when it chews the cud. Now, this is kind of gross, but it's very true. Cows have basically four chambers in their stomach. They, they cows eat grass and send it to their stomach. Then they burp it back up, chew on it some more, then swallow it again. And this happens three or four times. Well, the word that's used in the Old Testament for that is basically to chew the cud. It's thought digestion, where we're getting every ounce of nutrition from the Word of God by going it over, mulling it over, over and over and over and over again, meditating. That's what we mean by that. Now, I want to show you one method today. Method number one is what I call the pronounce it method. In this method, what you do is read it repeatedly. But each time you read it, you emphasize a different word until you've repeated all the words. And I'll show what that means in a minute. As you read it, after you've read it and you've emphasized every word, then write down the insights you gain simply by emphasizing each individual word. When you try it, you'll see what I mean. Think about sometimes the, the way to, to understand as a concept is to, see, to understand what the opposite is. Think about the opposite of the word or define the word or look it up in a dictionary. I use a dictionary on my phone when I read the Bible almost every day. Think of synonyms. So look under the thesaurus in the dictionary and find words that are similar. Write down then what you learn and what you discover. Now here's an exercise. I want you to look at Colossians 3, 16. And I'll just give you a little bit of this and then I'm going to have you do it. But you'd start, let, the, Colossians 3, 16 says this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And so the first time through you go, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Well, what is the word let? mean? Does it mean allow? To allow something? To let it happen? Um, to uh, concur with it? To agree to it? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Be the second word emphasized. Well, that's not just any word. It's the word. It's a particular word. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now, you would do that over and over again, kind of like I'm doing, thinking about it and meditating on it just by repeating it and pronouncing it. I want you to try that. So we're going to talk about that with a group of your colleagues, talk about how that has been important to us. And then we're going to spend the rest of this time together working on learning how to use the pronounce it method and beginning to apply that in your studies through the 40 days in the Word. Thanks. Have a great day.